Yeah, hello everybody. Um, so let's leave the infrastructure behind and talk about drones. Uh, the first question usually for me is, does anybody have a drone? So who has a drone at home? There's so one, two, so interestingly, this is over the past three years, it's usually the same. Drone is a big hype issue, but nobody has one at home. And a, a lot of people are really annoyed of the noise. So when I talk of drones, I'm not talking about these male bees. Um, they are drones originally. Um, their function is to please the queen. But so from that perspective is what I like to think of the image of a drone. The industry on the other side is rather talking about UAVs, SUAVs, RPAS, and VTOLs. And usually people tend to get bored because they do not understand what is meant. Uh, these abbreviations and acronyms stand for unmanned aerial vehicles, small unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, remotely piloted aircraft systems, and vertical takeoff and landing systems. The reason, and that is one reason why not so many people are talking about drones in the last couple of years, now it's becoming more and more an issue, is basically because drones were associated with the military aspect. Drones were the means to bring death and destruction to thousands of people, and if you think of urban and cities and drones, you usually thought of destruction. I rather think of the male bee, and I think it's uh, time to regain the power over terms. It's the same with rockets. Rockets are a means of mass destruction, and on the other hand, they bring you to the sky, they are the foundation of science, they uh, give you a whole new perspective. And so when we talk about drones, we talk about semi-automated, electrically powered systems, which are capable of vertical takeoff and landing. This is very important to understand the true disruptive power of drones. The disruptive power lies in vertical mobility. It's all about the potential to leave infrastructure behind, that you have a way to move from A to B without the need of having a road, without to have a build a street or anything. You can move cordially, literally everything from A to B. And this is, uh, when you look at the current state of technology on the studies, we have three systems which are currently dominating the area, and I don't think that there will a lot of other ones. It's multi-rotors, which are basically multi-copter helicopters. We have systems which are much rather like an airplane. They still need an, a little airport to start and get down. And we have tilt-wing systems, which are a crossover of both of these things. They all have their potentials, and what you see here is looking at them as air transportation systems in cities. It's for urban aerial transportation, and the ones on the left hand is for short distance to fly within cities. It's much rather something like an electrified autonomous helicopter. And on the other side, you have a mid-range electrified airplane for mid-range distances. It's basically the reason why a lot of companies, corporates, and scientists think about these possibilities. It's the same with electromobility on the roads. It's less noise, it's higher reliability, it's safer, and less expensive as everything what we have currently around. So, currently, if you talk about drones in cities, there are more or less four areas. You have them for inspections, for logistics, for mobility and for leisure. Leisure is what we usually have, it's that you fly something around from drone racing to making aerial photography. Um, and that's, from my point of perspective, the least important stuff. Um, from inspections, it gets much more interesting because it gives you the idea to get air surveillance. And air surveillance is not just about police capabilities to see things, it's about fire brigades, that they can really get an information about a disaster area before they hit the spot. And for example, in Hamburg, the fire brigades are experimenting with uh, drones because it gives them the possibility if their cars are stuck in a traffic jam to get information about huge disasters far in advance. If you go to logistics, 
We usually think of the pizza drone, but there are much more um, important needs. It comes from if you're going for emergency response. In Frankfurt, we are seeing first models that um, blood is delivered from one hospital to another. It's also an issue for not having to go to suggested roads. And on the other hand, of course, it's an industrial issue. If you look at companies like Vert, which are known for the fact that they can transport every little screw to every place on this planet within 24 hours, this is a means of transport which really helps to keep that up. Mobility, leisure, I flip through, and mobility is this what everything and everybody is talking about currently. It's air taxis. We had the discussion in Germany about flug taxis. Um, there you could see the response on innovation in Germany. It's currently still, um, yeah, it's something funny which will not come. Well, we are convinced that air taxis or passenger drones, there is a huge future because it can occupy an, an, a frame above roads. You don't have to build any kind of infrastructure and you can bring people from A to B to move them. To give you an idea what's behind it, this is a calculation from Porsche Consulting. Um, how much it costs from München Riem Airport to downtown um, Munich. Uh, it takes 10 to 15 minutes with the current systems elaboration and it costs around 100 euros. So if you're used to uh, go from the airport in Munich downtown with a cab, it takes you 30 to 40 minutes and it takes, costs you around 80 to 100 euros currently. So it's really comparable and that's a reason why a lot of companies are thinking about building these air taxi models and defining the ranges where they are sensible. And to come to, to urbanization, probably, and from my point of perspective, um, passenger drones and air taxis might have the same impact on architecture like street cruisers might have them have before. Um, if you look on the, uh, for example, United States or in Europe, the suburbs, they were pretty much guided by the development of the car industry. And from that perspective, we will see a huge impact on architecture with drones and parent passenger drones, because these are currently models where you can see, for example, um, a passenger drone arriving at a skyscraper, and that is the models the, um, which are tested, for example, in Dubai and other areas. Airbus is starting in Sao Paulo and Mexico City next year with a helicopter service, basically doing the same thing. There's still a pilot, but they are starting with an app and you have a helicopter on demand service where you can say, okay, I want to go in Sao Paulo from outside to downtown and the helicopter will take me there. It's like an Uber app. And we will see that in Berlin, this here is from Langhoff Architects, and I think it's amazing because you can see how this whole concept can fit within the cities, and that you really have just to open up your mind and to look above, to have an, an idea of intermodal concepts of drones. So, it's all, as usual with innovation, it's about disruption and technology is much faster than social acceptance. It's much faster than business cases. That's what we realize, because if you have no regulation, it's really hard to calculate any business cases. And the last mover is politics, because they have to sort of kind of like um, get around with all the different interests. But we see currently a fast disrupt moving into vertical mobility, and that is why I'm convinced uh, that drones will have a massive and huge impact on our cities for good. It won't be about little noisy, tiny things spying on us. It will be helpful meanings for construction workers, for taking people from A to B, from a hospital, if there's a traffic jam, just to get you, or for in, in pregnancy cases and so forth. There's a lot of useful cases where it makes a lot of sense to use an airspace, where you don't have to pay for everything, where you don't have to kill any kind of nature. It's a growing highway, and if nobody's using, it's just not existing. And that's why I believe the power of the future is within drones. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to the discussion.